Back in September of 2020, Panasonic released the S5 to the market, bringing a small-bodied S-series camera to their users, yet retaining the full-frame sensor. Well, today I'm pleased to show you this, the brand new Lumix S5 Mark II. Before getting started, it's worth mentioning that this is not the only S5 being announced today, as there is an S5 Mark IIx also due, but we'll come back to that a little bit later on. The other thing that I wanted to mention straight off the bat is that the S5 Mark II now supports phase detection autofocus, which is a first for Panasonic cameras, and we'll dive into this in more detail later. Weighing in at a reasonably lightweight 740 grams, the S5 Mark II becomes the first camera in the L-squared partnership between Panasonic and Leica that's been produced. Built around a newly developed 24 megapixel full frame sensor and a new imaging processor, the Mark II's performance sees a noticeable increase over its predecessor with a video image quality that's on par with the S1H. You can choose to shoot using the 3 inch free angle touch LCD monitor or the 3.6 million dot OLED EVF which refreshes at 120 frames per second. The rest of the Mark II feels pretty familiar in your hands as it's very similar to the original with just a few tweaks. We now have an 8 way easy to operate joystick that you can move around your monitor quicker and we also find a full size type A HDMI port. On the opposite side there are two UHS-2 compatible SD card slots which support relay recording, backup recording and allocation recording. Continuous burst shooting gets an upgrade and takes the mechanical shutter up to 9 frames per second over the Mark 1 7 frames per second, whereas using the electronic shutter we see a hefty improvement from 7 frames per second to 30 frames per second in the Mark II. With multiple 6K resolution settings, you can shoot in a 3x2 ratio at 10 bit 420 in long got H265, as well as 6K in a 17x9, also 10 bit 420, and these are available with an unlimited recording time without the risk of overheating. This is thanks to a new subtle fan found here just underneath of the viewfinder, reducing any extra bulkiness to the S5 Mark II's body. Now it wouldn't be Panasonic without a huge selection of video settings for you to choose from, so I'll only highlight a few and list the rest. Cine 4K and Standard 4K allows you to capture 422 10-bit at 25, 50 and 60p, while stepping down to Full HD allows you to shoot at a higher 120 frames per second, letting you really slow down your content. With a range of picture profiles including the 14 stop vlog mode, you can get creative in camera when setting up your desired looks. There is also a new feature called real time LUT which allows you to upload your favourite LUTs via an SD card and these can be selected and directly applied in camera to your footage, saving you time in your post production workflow. It's at this point that I should probably mention the S5 Mark IIx, which I have not been able to see, although I do have a few images that I can share. The dark and COVID looking design is not the only difference. The S5 Mark IIx is capable of 5.8K Apple ProRes recording to an SSD via the HDMI or USB port, along with the all intra option too. Additionally, it supports Apple ProRes RAW video via the HDMI, along with both wired and wireless IP streaming and a USB tethering. So let's talk about phase detection. As many of you will know, this has been a major talking point around the Lumix systems for quite some time, and Panasonic has now said that they have taken those years of knowledge from their Contrast AF and combined the two together to give a new phase hybrid autofocus system. Whilst finding out about the new cameras, Lumix stated that there are six areas where they found that Contrast AF struggles and that's the reason for the new addition. These areas are when video tracking, 
if you have several people in your frame and you can now lock onto your correct subject with ease. Product introduction videos as seen on YouTube, when shooting in strongly backlit conditions or directly into the light source, and we see an improvement when focusing in low light conditions. There are 779 AF points covering the imaging area and with an improved subject detection for both humans and animals, the Mark II locks on and tracks far better than before. This is a pretty simple test and unfortunately the weather was not the best, but you can see that the subject detection follows me as I cross the frame right up to the camera and then back again. Something I am notorious for is handheld shooting, as I really prefer not to carry a tripod around with me to minimise the load that I am carrying. With an upgraded image stabilisation, the S5 Mark II makes this even easier for a wide range of conditions. A new Active IS provides an optimised horizontal, vertical and rotational correction and compensates up to as much as 200% when compared to a more conventional stabilisation. Now, this is no way going to replace the need for a gimbal, but for those moments whilst you're out and about and want to capture a moving moment, the S5 Mark II performs well enough to produce smooth, eye-catching content. Along with a better low-light focusing down to minus 6 EV, the Mark II sees an improvement to its noise sensitivity. With an ISO range of 100 to 51,200, you are able to shoot in dark environments or capture your subjects handheld with a higher shutter speed. With dual native ISO technology, you can capture cleaner footage when in areas where lighting your subject is a struggle, such as filming a wedding or in a theater. As you can see, I move up through the ISO range and although the lights do blow out, and there is visible noise, I think you would agree that even when shooting at 51,200 ISO, your content is still pretty usable. To give you an idea of how dark it actually was, this is what I could see, taken on my phone, and this is what the S5 Mark II could see. Powering the Mark II is the same BLK22 battery seen in the original S5 and it's capable of capturing up to 370 images on a single charge, or up to 1250 when in a power save mode. Switching into video allows for up to 90 minutes of recording time, but it would be worth picking up a spare battery or two if you shoot a lot of content. I'm looking forward to getting a little more hands-on time with the S5 Mark II, and I will wait to see if I get a chance to try out the Mark IIx closer to its launch later on in this year. For now, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit subscribe, ring that bell to get notifications of all our latest content, and if you'd like any more information, please check out the link below or pop into your local London Camera Exchange.